wanted to say a couple of things that were a little bit different tonight. And one, one relates to this whole question of legitimacy, which is consistent with this whole IR uh, perspective that I used to articulate. And, you know, we always argue that sovereignty is an internal thing and that it comes from within. But legitimacy ultimately comes from outside. Um, when a country declares its sovereignty and it says, you know, I'm a nation, first thing it does is it looks to the United Nations to see which is the first country or set of countries that will acknowledge and will say, okay, this is a legitimate country. And, and, and this is where I have a challenge. I, I have some, um, I, I'm not understanding how could after all this time and after the condemnation that has come from so many different quarters, um, President Granger actually think that he could assume office and he could govern as normal, you know, within the context of CARICOM, within the context of the Commonwealth, that he could go to the United Nations and he could speak, even though um, pretty much I have not heard a single country other than Guyana that has, well, people in Guyana that has said that they are comfortable with what is happening there. And, and that is something that fascinates me, that after all this time, he's actually still willing to go along with it because he believes that you know, GCOM can declare tomorrow that he's president and that he can uh, can continue uh, and go on as normal. It would be very, very difficult for him to govern Guyana internally, far less to establish relationships with his brothers and sisters across the world. Because the, the reality of the situation is that I struggle in this to find anyone other than a person who supports the APNU AFC, either locally or abroad, that, that actually agrees that this is the right thing to do. Um, and this is why I keep saying, you know, Hillary Beckles was the most recent person that came out. He's been savage. Prime Minister Motley came out. She was savage. I mean, she was almost a national hero a few weeks ago. Uh, Prime Minister Gonzalez, he came out and he's been savage. Of course, me being savage is nothing new because I always get attacked, you know, whenever I do these polls. <laughs> but it has been a, a slew of people who have been attacked, the OAS, everyone. And, and it is as though everyone that has that automatically becomes evil overnight you become evil by suggesting anything other than that lane. But the other more important thing I want to, to raise tonight, though, is, is, is this idea that the question of breaking the law, as, as um, a colleague just said quite rightly, um, I think that these guys know. Um, when election night or the night of the count, when Mingo uh, started to do this fancy footwork with Region 10 data, I think that he understood that he was breaking the law. and. I would say that it's no different to what Yasim Abubakar did when he stormed the Red House in Trinidad and Tobago in 1990. It's a coup. Mm -hmm. The thing with a coup is that once you start a coup, you don't, you don't back down. Because ultimately, when you start that process, you know, the only thing that can end it is, is, is death in, in the case of what Bakar did. And ultimately, Guyana is under siege. And I think that the siege that Guyana is under for the last 100 years is no different to the siege that Yasim Abubakar held Trinidad and Tobago in for those few days back in 1990. The question is, how do you get out of this siege? And how do you get to a situation where you can move back to normalcy? Um, in the case of Abubakar, it took a, um, it took a, a um, basically an amnesty mm -hmm. that was offered. And, and my suggestion is that this is very well the stage that you may have to come to know because I don't think these guys are gonna back down. The reality of the situation is that if the government changes in Guyana tomorrow, and you, you make Dr. Infran Ali president of Guyana, these guys know that they're going to prison and they're going to prison for a long time because of course they broke the law. Um, th there's really very little justification for it. But the reason that we're seeing them digging their heels more and more is because they understand the consequences are gonna be devastating for them. Uh, the consequences for the PNC are going to be politically devastating, but these two guys particularly, because they're the two ones who are exposed, have to pay a, a dear price for this. And my feeling is that the time has come where some diplomatic back channel needs to be established to see whether or not there is a possibility that some kind of amnesty arrangement can be adhered to. Um, these guys can be assured that they will not leave uh, office and walk into prison. And, and then hopefully the situation can be resolved because my feeling is that they're going to go to court sooner rather than later. If they don't get what they expect tomorrow, I suspect that if they feel that he will be pressured to make a particular statement, they're going to go to court and they're going to block the process. Um, in the case of Guyana, I've noticed a difference between the types of judgments that you're seeing at the local level and the types of judgment that you're seeing at the CCJ. The thing is that it's going to take a while to get there, and it is possible 
that they will get some kind of a judgment at the local level, either from the high court or from the appeal court, that may very well slow down this process and may keep you at bay for another few weeks. So I agree with everything that I've said, I've heard today. Yes, I think that, you know, um, the, the law is on your side. And I think that you guys have been quite patient, quite frankly, because you have been dealing with this for a long time, you know, and the supporters have been, been relatively well behaved. But I think it's come to the point now where there needs to be some kind of diplomatic back, back channel. Because I don't believe that any of these guys realize or, or think that they're doing something that's right. The supporters do. But I think that, you know, the thinkers in there, they're, they're right now, it's, they're under siege and, and they're acting in a way. And my feeling is that that's really the only resolution that we can come to at this stage.